you know, I, I, I know both organizations are, are nonpartisan uh, because I wouldn't be in either one of them if they were. And uh, I guess another thing, you know, to, to let everyone know, these, both these organizations are, you know, grassroots organizations, you know, based on, on the people that have come together. Uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but neither one of you are, are paid for your activities. Uh, so, you know, Nancy Pelosi, your, your AstroTurf argument doesn't really work here. Um, I guess the, uh, the things, you know, you guys uh, talk about that, that's important for people to understand is that it needs to be uh, uh, from ground up <laughs> and not from the top down as, as people have been, you know, made to believe or told that's just the way it is. Um, I guess we'll start, with, you know, with you, Laura, about, you know, your thoughts on that. I think that's absolutely true. Um, you know, the campaign for liberty has always, e even back to the Ron Paul campaign, um, they were really focused on getting things started at the grassroots. Um, we were very, um, very insistent on having precinct leaders, um, you know, at the most basic political level. Um, and, and even now, the, the, the campaign for liberty has a precinct leader program. Um, we call it our local coordinators, um, and, and we train from the ground up, um, we have county coordinators, we have, we have regional coordinators for our, for our congressional districts. Um, so certainly it's, it's very important. Everybody is a volunteer in Nebraska. Um, there are some states, I think, that, that have been able to make enough money that they, they are able to at least um, provide for some of the uh, expenses of, of some of their leadership. But in Nebraska, everybody's a volunteer, and, and every volunteer um, is really kind of coughing up the money to support the program and the continuing mission of the organization. Um, it all starts at the, at the, at, at the grassroots. If, if we don't build up a, a firm root base, um, you know, no matter what we have above, um, we'll, we'll be pointless. Um, the other thing that I think is important to, to notice about the, the Campaign for Liberty is that you know, not only, you know, it, although Ron Paul was a Republican and um, was running for the Republican nomination, if you look at the Paul campaign, if you look at what Ron Paul said, if you look at what the Campaign for Liberty is saying, if you go on the Campaign for Liberty website, you'll find a significant number of people who are either um, nonpartisan or, or a few Democrats, some Republicans, but they're equally critical of all parties. You know, um, uh, that there is, there is a general distrust of the parties. Um, and, and, you know, parties have their place. But um, I think it's important to realize that, you know, if, if you're a member of a party, you have to be willing to criticize your party when it's wrong as well. Exactly. Now, um, I, I think you touched on it a little bit, Shelley. You know the the importance, you know, uh, of everything coming from, you know, from the ground up. You know, it, it just seems most of the leaders we have today, and and the party structures themselves have just kind of wanted to dictate to us from on high and. I mean, I, I think people really need to, to, to realize the, the importance of, of, you know, state sovereignty and, and keeping the government close to the people. Uh, it, it's so much easier if, if a lot of the things that are going on, you know, if we want to have a health care debate in the state of Nebraska, let's have it in the state of Nebraska and let's do what we as Nebraskans think is right because it's so much easier for you or I or even people in Alliance, Shadron, Norfolk, to come to Lincoln to have your voice heard, you know, and very few of us can go to Washington and battle million-dollar lobbyists to have our voices heard. That's right. You know, the, the founders intended for people at the local level to have their voices heard by people right there. They did. They actually. Uh, you can find documentation quote, quotations about a faraway city that we don't want to be having to talk to a faraway city because they don't know what's going on in Lincoln, Nebraska, or out in uh, Scotts Bluff. They, they don't know what the people in those areas need. And you can see evidence of, of all kinds of things the federal government does that have affected Nebraska directly, uh, changing qua water quality standards. Uh, and then mandating certain changes so that a town like Bridgeport, Nebraska has to 
uh, dig a well now for a town of 1,500 people, uh, a well with the water treatment plant, because they, they lowered the level of arsenic so far that they can't meet that standard. And how can a town that size afford that? So from a from situation like that all the way to whether you're forced by law to buy health care, what does someone in Washington, D.C. know who's from, you know, New Jersey about what Nebraska needs? It, what, what, does, what does the unicameral necessarily know about what uh, Lincoln Public Schools needs or the Crete School District? Uh, the people in the area in which they live know best what they need or want, and the, the officials within a, this very near distance of them are going to listen. Um, and that's what we need to restore. So it starts with me as an individual, and, and then it, and it flows up. And that also fits the rights, the matter of where do your rights come from. Um, we as individuals grant those to government, not the other way around. States <laughs> came together and, and agreed to give the federal government certain limited powers. And so when you, you view it from the point of original intent, we are upside down. Now, and I think the, the limited powers thing is an important thing for us to discuss because one of the reasons that the founders really wanted limited powers was, was because they knew that, that the national government could not possibly, you know, always make the right decision. Um, you know, uh, I think it was Jefferson, but maybe it was Madison, one of those two, um, wrote about the importance of federalism, you know, the notion that the states have a significant amount of authority because they could be laboratories of democracy. You know, there's this notion that, you know, you don't implement policy from the top um, and, and make it work for everybody. You let all of the, the, the individual states figure out what works for them and if something works well in Massachusetts or Nebraska or California, um, then maybe some of the other states will take that on if, if, it, if it looks like it's a good deal, but you don't impose from the top down. Yeah, it, exactly. Um, you know, I think you know, anyone watching this can, can realize, you know, these federal mandates come down and, you know, the government dictating from on high, you know, what works for California doesn't necessarily work for Nebraska. And what works for Nebraska doesn't necessarily work for Florida. So, you know, it, it, it needs to be incumbent upon the states to, to come up with solutions for themselves, and then other states can look and see yeah, and if, if that would work for them or if it doesn't. Um, but you can't say, well, this works in Nebraska, so we have to force every state to do it. Um, I guess to stay on the you know, kind of state sovereignty uh, subject, there's a, there's a movement kind of around the country, and it's finally getting to Nebraska to uh, reassert their state's rights under the Tenth Amendment. Um, I know you guys are probably familiar with the, the legislation that's been proposed. What, what do you think about that? And I guess we can start with Laura. Well, well, well I, would, I would sort of defer to Shelley because she's done a lot more work on that. Um, I would just say that with respect to Senator Fulton's resolution, um, it's a good, it's, it's a really good start, um, but, but we have to keep in mind that, that it's a resolution, and resolutions are, um, you know, I, I think it's a good thing for us to take a stand and to say this is what we want. I, I don't think, I think we have to recognize, though, that that's not necessarily going to get us where we want to be. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a symbolic gesture in reality, and it's, it actually is it's a symptom of how far things have gotten. What we really ultimately need is a repeal of the 17th Amendment. Because if you look at that issue back in 1913, what that did is untether the state's ability to drive a wedge into the federal government. Uh, that, that was prior to the 17th Amendment. The state legislatures actually elected, or you know, really appointed uh, state, states, the senators to the United States Congress. And once that was, um, changed where it became a popular vote, the states lost their power. 